Hello everyone, I am Matt Vidpro AI, and welcome back to another video. Videos this week might be pretty sparse, unfortunately. I am in college, and this time of the year gets pretty busy. I have finals, among other things, and as much as I'd like to make more videos for you guys, I unfortunately have to focus on school a little bit sometimes. Anyways, I got this video for you guys. Today we're looking at GPT-3's latest update. If you guys don't know what GPT-3 is, basically OpenAI, the company that's behind Dolly 2 text-to-image generation AI, has another AI called GPT-3. It's a text-based model, and you can do all kinds of different things with it. It might seem like it's boring on the first place, it doesn't generate cool imagery or anything like that, but it can create a lot of different kinds of text. I am a huge fan of GPT-3, I can't wait for GPT-4 to come out one day, but recently, like a day or two ago, GPT-3 got a pretty big update, and that's what we're going to be talking about. So when you guys make a OpenAI account, and you go to beta.openai.com slash playground, you'll be brought to the GPT-3 interface. When you sign up with an OpenAI account, you get $18 of credits for completely free. And with GPT-3, which is quite a cheap model, you can really stretch those credits out far. So there's a lot to explore here with the GPT-3 interface. This is your main text box, obviously right in the center. They give you a little example actually of what you could do. For example, write a tagline for an ice cream shop. Very, very simple task to complete. And that's really what a lot of people seem to use GPT-3 for is completing tasks. So instead of writing a tagline for an ice cream shop, we'll do something a little bit more difficult. Write a poem about an ice cream shop that serves ice cream with the worst imaginable flavors. So basically what GPT-3 is gonna do is look at this text and interpret it and then give us an output when we click on this little green submit button. Now, notice in this text I said write a poem. I am telling it to do something, I'm instructing it. You don't always have to instruct the model to get it to work, it's just going to try to complete the text no matter what. However, OpenAI has put great care in developing this model over the years to be able to accept stuff like write this or do this or complete this. So instructing it does work very well. But let's say I just pasted a blog post and then click the submit button on the blog post. It's going to try to just complete the blog post with no instructional data in there. Let's just click the submit button and see how it does. As you guys can see, it actually wrote quite a bit here. A shop so strange, a sight to behold, it serves flavors that cannot be told. From the strangest of fruits to the most bizarre meats, this shop only serves flavors so grotesque. The first one I tried, it made me scream, it was ice cream made of sardine. It had a smell that made me sick and a taste that made me so ticked. The second one I tried was made of liver and it made me want to quiver. It was salty and slimy and had a sour taste. It was certainly not the flavor I craved. The third one I tried, it was made of glue, it was sticky and gooey and made me spew. It was so thick, it was so hard to scoop, and it stuck to my tongue with a goop. If you want a treat that's truly unique, this ice cream shop has all the flavors you seek, but be warned, the flavors are not for the faint of heart, so if you dare, enter this ice cream shop at your own risk and start. Wow, that's actually incredibly impressive. As you can see, it definitely did our task here, wrote a poem about an ice cream shop with the worst imaginable flavors, and as you guys can see, it actually did rhyme here, which is a portion of this GPT-3 update that we're experiencing today. Now, before this model was known as Text Da Vinci 2, as you can see the model thing on the side here, now we are upgraded to Text Da Vinci 3. This is the most capable model in the GPT-3 series, can perform any task that any of the other GPT-3 models can, and often with higher quality, longer output, better instruction following, and it can process up to 4,000 tokens, so a token can sort of be thought about as a little meme, a little bit of information. So meats, for example, might be one or two tokens long. It's not exactly word-based how many words, it goes by tokens. Some of the strengths are complex intent, so it can really deeply understand different tasks, different words, it can understand the meaning behind entire paragraphs. It understands different causes and effects. It can generate creatively, which we definitely just saw. It can search for different stuff and summarize things for the audience. And it can do a whole lot more than that. But those are just some known strengths. 
With Text Da Vinci 2, again this previous model before this new Text Da Vinci 3 update, we almost never would see rhymes like Behold and Told. We never would see rhymes like Scream, Ice Cream, and Sardine, or Sick and Ticked, which are close to rhyming. Liver, Quiver, we never would have seen that possible before. It can come up with all sorts of different text for whatever number of tasks that you want it to do. It knows about Abraham Lincoln or any other historical figures, but it will not be afraid to just straight up make facts up. So you got to be w watching for that. You know, you can't really use it for your homework because it might just start talking about Abraham Lincoln's childhood and completely make things up. Something else that I attempted to do in an earlier video of mine was take the previous model, DaVinci 002, and use it to enhance prompts to be used with text-to-image AIs, which was a really fun video, by the way. I suggest you watch it. So we're just going to say, take the text below and enhance it with new creative description. Very, very vague prompt. We're going to see how it does here. We'll just say lemon character, and then the output here... Wow, that is a pretty long paragraph. Something I noticed with Text Da Vinci 002, the previous model, was it did not want to write a lot. It just sort of wrote the most simple little descriptions it ever could, and Text Da Vinci 003 definitely likes to write a lot more. We got an entire paragraph. We did the input of Lemon Character, and we got the Lemon Character was bright, cheerful, soul, you know, glass half full kind of person. And uh, yeah, it sort of describes who they are, which is pretty interesting. And I guess it definitely did follow the prompts there. I guess we'll try it in an image generator here. Let's go with Stable Diffusion 2.0. Let's see how Stable Diffusion handles this prompt. Well, we no doubt got Lemon related images and happy people, I suppose. It's pretty interesting results here, but as you can see, I think this isn't necessarily the best prompt for generating imagery. Here is the prompt I used in the original video where I tested this method out. Let's try the same thing, just lemon character. This time we should get more image related results. And yeah, it sort of describes the character maybe a little bit better. Definitely very natural language it's generating here. Okay, we actually did get a pretty decent lemon character out of this one, although we did get a lot of just straight up images of lemons. This one's really not too bad for stable diffusion, and I am quite impressed, honestly, by this generation, but definitely looks like a happy character. Either way, I think GPT-3 version 3 is doing a great job here. What are the features of the iPhone 23? It literally writes us a bulleted list, 5.4 inch OLED display, that's not very big. A14 Bionic, 5 nanometer process, dual rear camera. It's just given us like what you might see out of a regular iPhone these days. That's where, you know, we're going to have to change our prompt here. What are the crazy futuristic features of the future iPhone 23? Yeah, there we go. Now we're going to get some features you never would have thought of. 3D holographic display, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, wireless charging. So yeah, that... You gotta change your prompt sometimes to get models like this to behave properly. I'm gonna go through these little side features now. Temperature sort of is like the randomness. Lowering this down closer to zero is gonna give you a lot less random results. Usually anything like 0.7 to 0.8 is really pretty good for most tasks. Maximum length, this is just how long the AI is allowed to generate for. And you know, usually anything under 700 and over 200 is pretty good for this range. It's not gonna generate over a thousand very often or even over 500 very often. Top P, I really never mess with too much. I usually leave this at 1, but 0 0.5 means half of all likelihood of weighted options are considered. Frequency penalty will basically decrease the model's likelihood to repeat the same line verbatim, but if you want it to for summarization purposes or something like that, you'd want to have this turn it down a little bit, but if you don't want that, you're going to want to turn it up. And presence... This is basically going to make it talk about new things more often. So this is like, let's change gears here. Talk about something else. And you've got a few other options as well, but those are the main important ones. Now my favorite part, let's get into some generations that people made on my Discord. By the way, if you're not joined the Discord, I really think you should. We just crossed over 6,000 members in the Discord, and there's tons of AI resources on the Discord for you viewers at home. So someone sent in this tweet by Ethan. 
This is a rhyming wedding toast where the bride is a flying elf warrior and the groom is a potato. Very, very random. Let's raise our glasses high and stout with glee for the union of our bride who can fly so free and the groom who's just a humble potato. Their love is real, their hearts they follow. Though she's a warrior and he's a spud, their hearts are one and it's no dud. No matter how different they may be, their love is strong and full of glee. So here's to the bride and the groom so grand let's wish them luck and take a stand to the bride and groom and their love so strong may here lives be filled with happiness and song so yeah i mean it did the task it rhymed and combined those two very very unique concepts together in a way that makes sense very very impressive and hilarious generation gravity horse on my discord also sent in their generations this is a rhyming poem about an avocado chair, which of course, for context, avocado chairs are a commonly generated item with text-to-image generation AIs, or one of the original things that was tested with Dolly 2 when it released. An avocado chair, it's quite a stare, it's green and smooth and stands so fair, it's so unique, it's a sight to see, a comfy chair, a place to be, it's the perfect spot to rest and read, a place to sit and take the lead. It's a comfy chair, it's quite a find, it looks so cool and it's one of a kind. It's a chair of green, it's quite a view, it's a comfy place, it will do. It's a chair of avocado, it's so divine, it'll be the envy of many, a chair that will shine. <laughs> it's very, very capable at rhyming and it really used to struggle. Da Vinci 002 was not great at rhyming, it, it was... It almost never did it, basically. So it's really exciting to see that now this is a real capability and it just shows how great everything else in the model has improved. The same user, Gravity Horse, also did one about my famed lemon character relaxing on the beach. A cartoon lemon out of reach, sipping juice on a sandy beach, a warm sun and a gentle breeze. The perfect day for a lemon squeeze. The ocean waves crashing on the shore, a sight to behold, never a bore. He sips his drink and relaxes in the sun. His day of fun has just begun. The lemon basks in the sun and sand, feeling content, loves the land. For now he'll stay, but soon he'll go back to his home where he'll show that he had a great day at the beach sipping juice out of reach. So this one made maybe a little bit less sense than some of the others, but it still had really good rhymes and it still made a lot of sense. Definitely better than I've seen with any text model thus far. GPT-3 is truly amazing and you're missing out if you haven't messed around with it. And of course, viewers at home, GPT-3 can be used with an API to create any number of different applications. And like I said before, it's very, very cheap. So it's a great model. Probably the best product that OpenAI has ever produced. Seriously better than Dolly 2 in my opinion. I think it's more useful, especially now that Midjourney V4 is better than Dolly 2. And now that Stable Diffusion has better in painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video very much and maybe learned a few things about GPT-3. Let me know what you think in the comments, check out my other videos, and especially check out my Discord at home. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.